I can't get any fitter, any leaner, any more streamlined through the water, any more fat adapted. I, I just feel ready to go. Two days now until we fly out to Italy and oh, I just, I just can't wait to actually get on with the swim. I mean, people talk about loving the process and, and I absolutely do, like in the gym and, and those miles, putting them in in the pool. But I, I just want to go now. This, this is kind of a, a means to an end and um, it, it's, it's the starter. It's the aperitif, you know, it's the sorbet. I'm ready for the main course. It's been a challenge, if I'm being completely honest. We've had um, weather problems, uh, flooding problems, uh, changes of dates, uh, crew mixing, matching, people being subbed in. You, you could sit here and you could dwell on everything that's gone wrong or, or the stuff that still needs to be done. Or you could just sit back and be incredibly grateful and appreciative that despite everything, as a team, everybody's still committed to, to that one cause. And uh, that's certainly how I feel. Now a few days out, I'm just so grateful that like we're, we're in the trenches right now and uh, I'm just looking around and as a team, everybody's still here. Everybody started the journey is, is, is still here. And uh, that's really nice. When you get to the event itself, it's the environment changes, it's performance time, it's business time. It's full of emotion, it can be quite chaotic. And at that point, that's when you need a real world-class performance support team because they can make the difference between winning and losing. They can make the difference in, is this challenge going to be successful? And what I mean by that is the relationship with the athlete and the support team, they have to be on the same page. There has to be mutual trust and respect. They also have to know each other inside out when they need a little bit of support, when they need to pull it back or when they need to go again. As a kid, I remember we went for a family walk and he decided to go the long way round this, on this walk and ended up going on a cycle path, not a walking track, which was, you know, four or five times as long. And uh, mum and dad were frantically worried, thinking, Where, where's Ross? He took my younger brother Craig with him. And, uh, and then all of a sudden we see Ross in the distance with this big cheesy grin. He must have been, I'm guessing that, 10. Craig would have been five. And he's got him on his shoulders, just walking, laughing after this monster walk and uh, you know and after after he got lost so uh so so yeah yeah he's always always positive and i suppose that's his uh, main characteristic i am always worried um you know just to make sure that everything's going to plan um again just going back to the loch ness one it's just all about making sure that he's coherent and he's, you know, the medics on board and we've, we're all in place. If that wasn't all in place, then yeah, I would be very, very worried. But on, the, on this particular one coming up, I do feel quite um, confident everything's gonna be okay in terms of like his health. We don't know what the outcome's gonna be, of course, but in terms of his health, this time around, I do feel a lot more confident. Having people around me who are so close to me, a girlfriend, brother, they'll know, you know, if all of a sudden I'm doing something that's completely out of character, they'll go, ooh, that doesn't, that doesn't sound like Ross. But he's a more intelligent athlete now than what he was 10 years ago. So even though he's 37 now, he's uh, a lot more intelligent at 37 than 27. So, uh, so he's uh, older but wiser. On this particular swim, because I knew what had happened last time, I've insisted that I come with him this time and make sure that I'm definitely there on it, otherwise he wasn't allowed to do it. So that was kind of like the, it's either this or we just don't do it. So obviously Ross has, Ross has said, yeah, of course, yeah, no problem. This one's just perfect because one, he's motivated because he's training for something. It's a brilliant cause. And it's also because it's a challenge where he can really put his, his training to, to good use as well. So all three of those things. That's why this one's going to be good. When it comes to swimming, so often I think people neglect 
respect the strength side of their conditioning. And for me, I've always loved it. I've always loved the contrast of the two. So, you know, what you do in the gym will just have a profound impact on what you can do in the pool, lake, or, or at sea. Whether that is just strength prehab, making your body just more physically robust, or if it's actually building up those fast twitch muscle fibers. So you've got almost like gears in the muscles. You're not just predominantly slow twitch. You can actually inject a little bit of pace and, and power into, into the swim. So for me, Oh, the, the gym, it's, it's always, it's easy for me to train in here because I always know what you do here will have a profound impact on what happens out there in the water. A lot of people will talk about the end goal. They'll talk about victories, records, these extrinsic sort of metrics of success. Whereas one thing that I've learned is to really solely focus on the process. So one arm in front of the other as efficiently as possible, because ultimately if you focus on the process, then the outcome becomes inevitable. Whereas if you only focus on the outcome, you're not focusing on the process. So then the outcome basically is hindered. So it's a really interesting question that void of thinking about the end game and emerging from the water and, and talking about all we've done for charity, that, that's not entering into my head. It, it's literally, it's feeding intervals, it's different carbohydrates, it's making sure I'm hydrated, it, it's stroke rate, it's, it's all of those things. Purely focusing on the process, because if you do that, the outcome becomes inevitable.